Artist Gang Tuesday, and I got a new sweatshirt. What do you think? I like it. It's brown. It's totally cool. Anyway, um, it's Artist Gang Tuesday, and I have started it off. I'm going to be doing a little uh, page for you, but what started out as, oh, I'm just going to do something really quick, ended up being this really cool thing that I added more and more and more layers to. But anyway, every Tuesday, come back to the blog. We'll have the Artist Gang, and they'll be doing all kinds of things in their own styles. They're kind of eclectic bunch of amazing artists, so just come back every Tuesday, and we'll have some more stuff for you on the blog. All right, now watch this. So I thought today, the first artist gang, I would start us off. So I'm just gonna show you a little fun trick that I do. This is um, this is just a regular art journal. It's kind of a fancy one, but people always say, how many art journals do you have going on? Do you have like more than one? I have like 12 that I can work in any time. And none of them are close to completion, including the one I have before you. So this is kind of a fancy one. It's a rustico one. It's a fun leather. And what I do is I'll take all the extra stuff that I have brushes, palettes, and I'll put it in here if you're doing jelly prints. And I've got like you know, all these just smush pages. And you'll see I have one in here where I painted over it to make a scene, but like the stuff you see through here, that's the background goo. So I thought I would just do a fun thing with another smushed page. And sometimes people, um, oh look, something there so it doesn't stick. Um, sometimes people, uh, or even myself, will put all this junk on a journal, I mean on a canvas, and just kind of splatter it there. So I'm just going to get this really bold, colorful one. This looks like I was doing tons of colors and just kept taking the brush and cleaning it in between. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take my elephant stencil, and I'm just going to do, I think, this one side here of the page. Now, if you've not seen these, it's a mask as well as a stencil. So um, you just have to, for the first time, kind of pull apart the little um, attaching things. I'm probably doing it the wrong way. It's clearly easier if I do it this way. So I'm just going to pull this out, and then I'll be back. All right, so I've pulled them apart. So in essence, what you end up with is a positive and negative of the shape. And I'm going to use the mask, which is the positive piece of the shape. And I think maybe I'll just put it there. That's good. Maybe a further? No, who cares? So I'm going to paint around him so that the color of the elephant is showing through. But there's a little trick I want to show you. Actually, I learned this trick from Stephen Lurson, which is kind of probably the best trick ever. So I'm going to get a brush here. Oh, my brushes are always disgustingly dirty. Note to self, you should clean the brushes. I'm not going to, but you should. So who knows what color I'll get here. So I'm going to take the gel medium, and I'm going to put, because it's clear paint, around this stencil to hold him in place so that when I put paint on him, it's not going to seep underneath. At least I'm going to do my best to try to do that. Now this is kind of texturized because I have lots of layers of paint going on underneath this page, but it should help when, oh, when I'm going to paint, or not, clearly or not, um, to get anything to seep underneath him. And I'm putting it pretty heavy because I've got a lot of texture here. All right, so I've got that down. I've got a little palette here, and here comes the school bus, so when you hear it honk, don't be nervous. Um, I've got gesso and a little Titan buff, and I just like saying it. And I'm going to put my finger in both, and I'm just going to paint around the outside. So as I was painting this, I kind of feel frisky. I'm thinking about taking some green and maybe even some teal. Imagine that. Um, just to do the grass underneath. And I think I'm taking some green gold here. And if I can find one, there's my sap green. I'm going to take some sap green. And I think I'm going to have to throw a little bit, bit of teal. Ooh, maybe cobalt turquoise. I know. Let's live, let's live crazy, right? Ooh, but you know what else is the new color that I'm liking? This manganese blue. That's a fun color. Okay, I'm just, now I'm just putting the color on a palette. Hello, I've got tons of color here. So I'm still, maybe use my palette here and my finger. Again, gross. And uh, I'm just going to go into there. I'll set green. Maybe even pick up a little bit of that white. Just get some, some stuff here by his foot.
This is the moment of truth when you're on camera and you hope what you think you're doing turns out right. So let's just see. Okay, so he's awesome. And I know probably from there you're having trouble seeing him because of all the layers of chaos in the background. But I'm going to have to dry this and I'm going to go in with some grays. I'm going to use the opposite once it's dry to shade on the inside of him. So I just want to wash my elephant off here, drying him up. I'm going to dry this and I'll be back. I, I was going to go in with paint, but then I got this idea of like, why not try distress ink and a blending tool? So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to line him back up over where he was. Let's see if I can do that fairly decently. And then see if I can't shade. I was going to start with the walnut stain and just see how I do. I don't really know if it's going to work, but I know probably a lot of you have these. So before I go into the paint, which is fine, I thought, why not see if I can do it with something maybe everybody has. Again, this is always that moment where you're like, I hope everything went well on camera, because otherwise it's embarrassing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, so I am going to just wipe my stencil off, pack this stuff up, and then I'm going to come back. I think I'm going to do a couple little stamps, but otherwise, he's badass. That's a badass elephant right there. So I'm, you know, I'm fiddling because I can't help myself, but I start taking a baby wipe and now I can remove because it's water-based ink, which is another cool thing. I can actually kind of pull back on the color and reveal some of the stuff underneath and keep that edge. So I'm just playing around. Assuredly, I'm going to make a mess, but uh, where there's paper and like not paint underneath, it's sticking more, which is still even kind of cool. So just thought I'd fiddle. So of course I had a change of mind. I'm thinking I'm going to use the mask again. And I'm going to take another stencil, and this is one of my new ones, it's like a scripty. Usually I script write it, and I'm thinking I might just spray some black spray paint through it. Alright, so the mixture I have here, these are what I call magic bottles. They're these super inexpensive, like no-name brand bottles, and we sell them at the studio, but they're hard, so when you make an acrylic spray paint on the inside, they don't dry out, as long as you keep the cap. And that's kind of the secret to this, the cap and this hard plastic bottle. Anyway, this is a mixture of about 50% carbon black fluid acrylic paint and 50% airbrush medium. And that just makes it fluid enough to spray through the bottle. And like I said, I've only had one bottle clog, and it was because I forgot the cap. So I'm gonna mask this off a little bit, just so I don't get spray everywhere. And I'm not really even sure what this is gonna look like. I am totally winging this. This is how you go. You say, what does that look like? Well, I don't know, let me try it out. So typically I think if you're a scrapbooker, you come to a stencil and you think you must saturate the whole thing. We're not. We're gonna do like two or three sprays if it comes out right. Oh. Remember what I said it doesn't clog? I gotta wipe off the outside. I guess I left it open. Let's see if that, that aha. I said two or three sprays and then how many did I spray? 42? You know what I mean. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, let's see how this turned out. Oh, that's cool. And because I had my little guy underneath there, he's kind of pretty too now. You, of course he fell on the floor. Um, I kind of like that. And what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to dry this then I'm going to come back in and move this stencil down, put the uh, mask over it again, and get some more spray back here. All right, so hopefully he's dry. And I didn't clean my mask off because he's too cute now and I want to clean my paint off. And I'm so bad I usually don't clean my stencils. I know. Judge me later. So I'm going to put this back down here. And I'm going to spray again. Not that it's right side up or upside down, but clearly that was upside down. And mask him off. This, I'm going to mask it off a little bit more this way because I don't want it to double up. And uh, see what we get. And now I can't stop. This is a sick thing about me. I'm like, oh, let me do something really quick. And then, like, here I am, like, back and forth, more, more. So I am going to, I love that, by the way. I had a little, I had a little orgasm. Um, I'm going to put this back down. And I think I'm going to take, maybe I'll take a little bit of glaze. That's a good idea. I'm just going to take a little bit of glazing uh, liquid. Make a puddle right here. You won't be able to see it because it's clear on a really messy thing, but it's there. And I'm going to take some of that, and I think I'm going to go into the wet paint that's there and just kind of glaze over. 
Just because this makes it really transparent so that it looks like that stuff isn't just sitting on top. The clay should kind of whittle that down. I can even take baby wipe and kind of brush it back and just kind of push. I'm basically trying to push it back a little bit. I decided to come back in black on his booty again, so, oh, that's wet. I should make sure that's not wet. With the distress ink, just gonna come back in and darken his booty Again, I can't stop up. myself, because now I get another idea on top of another idea. So, <laughs> I know, listen, it's who I am, I have to just face it. I'm gonna spray this with fixative, because it's water-based, and I wanna put stuff on top of it. So, you should spray this outside, just so enough, do as I say. Not as I do. Open a window, it's gonna stink. And I gotta seal that sucker because I wanna put a glaze on top of another part of this. And if it's not sealed, then it's just gonna wipe away. And I gotta probably be extra heavy handed so that it doesn't wipe away. So there you go. Okay, so I'm gonna have that dry. And what I'm thinking is a little modeling paste through here. I like, um, I like that, I know art is in the ability to see, I like that, but be a passionate witness. I kind of think that should go there. And in three-dimensional modeling piece, and then glaze over the whole thing. I know, I'm just really just going crazy. This was supposed to be like a couple minute thing, and now it's, what, 40 minutes? I don't know. Anyway, um, I'll dry that, I'll be back. And I kind of realized I didn't really explain what I was spraying. This is a workable fixative. So like, say like you print something on your computer and you want to paint over it and the ink bleeds, this will stop that. So this will stop the water-based distress ink from bleeding when I put a glaze over it, at least we hope. Um, but there's also matte finishes and stuff like that you can put on, but this is just a working fixative. It kind of keeps it in place while I'm you're also working changing my mind now, because now I have colors of life here. And I put it down thinking I was gonna do that, but then that's out there and then I just decided to go with it. Oh, I forgot my topic. Now, if you were a patient person, you wouldn't have taken the heat gun and sat there and dried that and tried to get it perfect, but it's not dried at all, but I don't have patience. So I am gonna take a glaze and I've got a little raw umber out here and I have that glaze left over from over there. So I'm just gonna take, oh, you can't see. There's a glaze left over from there and I'm just gonna put it in here and I'm gonna glaze that outside. I might even put a little bit more glaze in there and see if I can't get that to stick onto there. And I'm just gonna glaze the outside. And anywhere there's paper, this is not gonna wipe off, I don't believe. So uh, we'll see what happens. So it's been about a minute and a half and I'm just gonna wipe away the glaze, keep it kinda grungy. You're really, um, because of the glaze, you get this really beautiful effect of like this distress, but you can, can determine and control how much you want. Unless, see, because there was paint underneath here, um, I can wipe it away. But like if there was an area that didn't have paint on it, like some of the paper, like here, for example, it's not going to wipe away as easily. So it's wiping off of the non-porous where the paint is better. And ideally, it catches in the nooks and crannies of your work. So that's why I put it over the colors of life, but either way, I kind of just like the effects. When is enough enough? Apparently never. So I'm going to put imperfection is beauty up there. It's always scary when you stamp because you never know if you're going to get something nice and clean. Oh look, imperfection totally is beauty because I just took the colors off life off. Nice. And the moral of this week's story is when is enough enough? Not until you say it's enough. All right. Happy playing. Mm -hmm.